This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. How did this thing get start, started? Do you remember? It was on an airplane. I think we were right. both on the same flight flying into Starkville, Columbus. Right, Mississippi. I was teaching at Mississippi State University, and Jim is also at now at Mississippi, Mississippi State University. And we were both coming back from different conferences. I think I think from Memphis, maybe. Anyway, we were on an airplane, and uh, we met each other for the first time, and we didn't realize that we were colleagues. Uh, we were both professors in different departments. I was in the music department, and you? Plant and soil sciences. See, I didn't know there was a plant and soil sciences department, and I was like, intrigued by that and he said that he was a florist and in an instant this is you know I've had very few artistic epiphanies but this is one of them in an instant I knew I had this idea of the of the piece and I said to him have you ever thought about being a performance florist and then he said I've always wanted to be a performance florist. <laughs> and so um, so that's how the so the idea started on an airplane actually I think it was the it's the high altitude oxygen deprivation that maybe helps peanuts um, and peanuts, yeah, and ginger ale. That, that's yeah. sort of, you know, that's, a, that's an important part of our aesthetic. If we attend to things that, are, that exist in life in one, in one domain or in one cultural space and then we think about them by exporting them into another space, I think that's intrinsically interesting and possibly fertile. So, um, so I thought the idea of a performance florist could be an interesting thing and I immediately heard music and the idea of a soundscape that could go with, um, the, in a sense, the dance, the choreography of an improvising florist. Sometimes it does mesh and sometimes it doesn't. The hard part for me, I think, though, is when it doesn't, because I'm used to trying to make things match, uh, make things stand out. And then sometimes, too, to just let things happen is really unusual for a florist. Jim heard the music for the first time, you know, a couple days ago in a rehearsal and he, I, you, you commented to me like, wow, this is really dark. Some of this is a very almost kind of menacing quality and, 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 and it suggested to you um, uh, dark uh, greens and, and branches and things like that. And I mentioned to him, I, th I said, that's great, but don't forget that you can make it a kind of counterpoint where you can contrast that. You can be the, a kind of relief or a foil to that. You could be the opposite in a sense. I completed my PhD in music composition here, um, had the great pleasure of working in many capacities with conductor Steve Schick, who I knew first as a percussionist who championed and continues to champion a lot of my, my music. And incidentally, I should say that Steve, Steve Schick, when I think of him, you have to understand there's like two kinds of ensembles or musicians who commission me. The first kind says, this is what we do, give us some of that. And then the second kind says, this is what we do, please, please do something different, make me do something new. And Steve is, to my mind, decidedly in the latter category and it's a great pleasure to work with people with that kind of, um, that kind of courage. I don't think that this is a comic piece, but it aspires to be uh, witty and whimsical and it delights in its levity alongside its more somber qualities and its rigor. I've, I just think the idea of like um, seriousness and humor as being always mutually exclusive is ridiculous. I'm, I, I, I think it's, and especially absurdity is something that I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. Absurdity uh, insofar as it makes us feel um, kind of silly, there's almost a giddiness, but absurdity also as a reflection of of tremendous pain, frankly. And I think that uh, 
for me, my sister Carolyn died suddenly and unexpectedly at the age of 28 a few years ago. And for me, that experience, I think, has in some way increased my interest in the absurd in music. There are certain flowers that you look at that can't be serious, like an orange Gerber a daisy just can't be serious. <laughs> On the other hand, a red rose in my mind, can't be funny. Do you have a sense of how you know if you're successful in a given performance? Well, when it comes to Concerto for Florist, yeah. when I stand back and when I look at what I've done from a distance, if, I, if it looks stylish, if it looks balanced, visually balanced, um, that means a lot to me if there's some color impact there and it's exciting. And also, big time, what you and Steven say. If you all are happy, then I'm happy with it because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, it's interesting though when you said that because it occurs to me that you think very much about the consequence, a kind of like static plastic object that is the consequence. And I think in many regards about the ritual of it. I think about the steps moving up to that final thing. But for me, I think success for this piece and for any is um, can be measured um, in if the if the audience ask the following two questions then I know I've succeeded and the first question is what the hell was that <laughs> and then the second question is can I hear more so those are in a sense that's kind of what I'm going after you know Mark and I Thank have been you friends all. for a very long time. I don't know how many pieces we've done together. And this is the end of that, right? Yeah, this is it. I was going to say, uh, I mean, really, <laughs> enough. But uh, fantastic. Thank you very Thank much. Mark. Thank you. Thank you all.